the band we're about to talk to today. A band whose name is on the lips of more and more people these days, Seattle's own Sleep Foxes. How cool is it that after 20 years of giving us great music, Sub Pop Records has a roster that is as strong as ever. And one of their latest and greatest additions is this folk pop five piece from right in their hometown that clearly believes in the power of the voice. Soaring harmonies, lots of reverb, and songs that recall the 1960s and even at times the 1860s, and yet still manages to sound somehow modern. They're pastoral, they're rural, they're even at times spiritual, and they're proof that sometimes all that hype is actually worth it. They are three foxes. Guys, thank you so much for doing this. I, I appreciate it. It's, it's good to meet you. I've, I've been a fan for a while now, and um, I, I, when I heard you were coming to town this week, we we're like, well, this is our this is our chance. So thanks for being right. here. Yeah, thanks for having us. And um, let me ask you first of all, how how sort of things are going? Because there's just been this I don't know whether it's like tsunami is the right metaphor or what it is, but this mm. wave of attention that's just mm. sort of been building since what January, February, and now it's kind of like is it overwhelming yet? I think the schedule can become overwhelming, you know, but the, your your day to day life is it's the same, you know. It's the same no matter if you're, you know, the experience of being in the van for eight hours and then going to a motel after the show is the same regardless of what the show is like, you know. So that, um, it hasn't changed our, like, lives so much, you mm -hmm. know. You're yeah. still in the van all the time. Just to get <laughs> to kind of chronological for a minute, because I think a lot of people who are going to see this don't sort of know the yeah. story of how the, the lineup, this lineup, came to be. Um, it's kind of started, this guy, with you and, and Robin, right? Yeah. Can you talk about like those origins, and you guys were friends in school, or yeah. Uh, Robin and I met when we were twelve, I think. Twelve. So that was ten years ago. But you know, he and I always kind of played music together just for fun, and it just kind of uh, we always did it as like just to do it. And Did it start with covers, or was it always original kind of original? No, Robin's been writing songs since he was born, I think, so. Very early, though? Were you writing stuff, like, very early? Um, well, I would write songs. I, I think I learned, started learning guitar at, like, 13 or 14, and I, okay. and I would... Yeah, I didn't go through a big period of, like, learning other people's songs. I learned a few Elliott Smith songs at first, and then would write... Elliot Smith rip off songs just to see how he did his own songs or whatever. Like learn the songs to figure out the Elliot Smith chords and stuff and then write songs with those chords. That's what I would do when I was like... Well, I love your sister Asia's bio that says she was struggling with Blackbird and Heart of Gold while you were just sort of like leaving her in the dust, right. I guess, essentially. Were you just like doing <clears throat> covers and playing other people's songs just didn't really... Um, well, no, I mean, like, I liked, I, it was fun to learn, it was almost like an exit, like, it wasn't like something you would, I, I, I've never learned songs to, like, impress people or, like, play at, like, a party or something, you know, like, oh, yeah, bust <laughs> that slow train coming or whatever, right. <laughs> you know, um, but I would learn songs just to, like, Robin like, brought his kid fiddle, everyone <laughs> gather around. But, but I would learn songs like, you know, like, uh, It's Alright Ma, I'm Only Bleeding, that Dylan song, uh -huh. I've learned that song just to learn all the words because that would, it's so long, uh -huh. you know, it's like nine minutes long. You know? uh -huh. It was fun. To, it's like fun. It was like fun exercises when you're 14 uh -huh. to learn songs. Do you feel? And I, I know. I guess I've been a little bit late to the game. Maybe there was a Seattle Times piece a month ago or something about this sort of try, trying to identify whether it is in fact a new S uh, Seattle sound. Yeah. Is that sort of like again someone trying to create something where there isn't really that much um, of a cohesion? Well, I think Seattle is a strong city for music, but I don't... In general. I don't think it's um, co now, comparable now to, you know, the, the grunge movement, right. you know, yeah. which was like a legitimate yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. that kind of like, from what I understand, took over Seattle for a while. You know, like, mm -hmm. this isn't that. I mean, if you walk and in... And I also yeah. don't feel that um, the bands are connected in much more ways than just kind of like a similar aesthetic trappings somewhat. You know, I think everyone kind of writes their own unique songs and nobody's like um, trapped in one genre. You know, like 
cave singers don't sound to any, anything like tiny vipers you know and, and they're both, but they're both great you know but they don't sound the same yeah you know if you walk down you know from the entrance of our practice space down to <laughs> ours at the end you would hear a lot of different music uh, yeah. <laughs> coming out of each one of those well, doors yeah, with those practice spaces too, it's like if that was your only microcosm of <laughs> Seattle music, you'd be like, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, it's just metal. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is you just know, metal. I mean, it's just like there, there are so many bands in Seattle, and like maybe there's like two or three that are signed to sub pop or something. It's just like that doesn't constitute like that, you know, it's not really yeah. an, an accurate. I think, well, I route. think Seattle City. Legislation needs to get their act together. So, so and, and that's that's the real thing because you know growing up, um, you know, uh, and being you know a kid like, and there was the Velvet Elvis there, which was an all ages club, and and um, you know you you had places, you know, you had legitimate places to play as a child, and and you had you could do tons of house shows and stuff like that without the cops coming. As a six year old child. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, you, honestly, like you know. I mean, I first shows at like you know thirteen and and on, and you're seeing like you know I mean Elliot Smith as you know as a kid before either or comes out, just crazy experiences like that. And then um, you know there's been you know a, a lot of clubs have gone the crocodile, um, you know just no longer. And um, I mean, uh, as far as like you know you know Seattle music, I think that like the amount of venues. Um, to have shows has dwindled, you know, mm -hmm. um, greatly. I, I mean, and so to that extent, I would say that in, <clears throat> I mean, Seattle music in general has suffered a great deal due to a lot of the, you know, sort of development or yeah, I mean, of I the think city. If there was more music-friendly like governance going on, sometimes the best music comes out of like there being no kind of infrastructure, though. You know, like hopefully, I mean, I would hope that with the dwindling of rock clubs or legitimate places to play that there turns into more of like a house show, like yeah. DIY sort of thing. That always seems to yield like the best music instead of, Seattle kind of has a little bit of a plug and play process where you make a demo and then it gets played on KXP and you get a ride from the stranger and then you play the crocodile and then you hope to get signed to like one of the mm -hmm. labels in town. And, and it, when it doesn't go that way, people harumph and quit, you know. <laughs> And uh, I mean, hopefully, there's there will be more of like uh, a little more existentialist of, a, of an approach musically because mm -hmm. of that stuff. But. I just mean no more anti music legislation. Right. Oh, 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 anti oh, right. anti yeah, youth yeah, culture yeah, totally. sort yeah. of legislation. Like anti youth yeah. culture legislation is going on. <coughs> for sure. Yeah. It stop. Mm -hmm. they and make, it always they had. Make I mean, the teen dance ordinance back in the day. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, all of that stuff. It was like, you know, total like lack of understanding and fear-based, you know, lawmaking, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we, we heard, there was a quote from our mayor, and he was saying, um, we want to make Seattle, like, music as, you know, fertile as Austin or something like that, and it's like, you, <laughs> be the next Austin. you must like, be kidding, like, you, liar, he's lying on his teeth. <laughs>